This is English shorthand dictation number 277. Dictation speed 140 words per minute. Ready? Start. Honorable Chairman Sir, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to raise a very important issue. The issue relates to cancer patients. The recent report of the Indian Council for Medical Research shows that the number of Indians suffering from cancer is projected to increase to 30 million in 2025. It was 27 million in 2021. The Health Minister has already said that 7.5% of global cancer burden is shared by India. So, every 13th cancer patient in the world is an Indian. This is a very gross situation and this also shows that cancer treatment facilities are a major issue affecting the nation. Every year, 1.5 million new cases are diagnosed. Cancer centers are mostly in cities and people coming from villages have to travel far and wide to see that the patient gets cancer treatment that is also expensive that jeopardizes their livelihood because they have to see that continuity of treatment is there for the patient. I would request the government that there should be more investment in the infrastructure for cancer patients. There should be radiotherapy units, radiation therapy units and chemotherapy units so that they can access these facilities. Sir, the 325th report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Science and Technology, Environment, Forests and Climate Change also pointed out the fact that there should be availability of adequate facilities in local regions so that people do not suffer by not getting the cancer treatment and care. There is another aspect which needs to be looked into by the Ministry of Health and there should be affordable and equitable care for cancer patients. It is a traumatic situation emotionally as well as financially when we talk about cancer. Sir, the report also pointed out that 6 crore people are pushed below the poverty line because of incurring this cost. I would urge the government to take this issue seriously. Honorable Chairman, Sir, Indian Railways are the lifeline of the people of this country, especially the poor and downtrodden people depend on railways for their travel. The railways had withdrawn train services and cancelled the fare concession for senior citizens and differently abled persons. Indian Railways provide concession in ticket fare for 53 categories of people like senior citizens, differently abled persons, medal winning sports personalities, cancer patients and journalists, women above 58 years of age and men above 60 years of age were given 50% and 40% concession respectively. Freedom fighters were honored and were given 100% concession. Full restoration of train services is yet to happen even after two years since the government imposed lockdown. To add more woes, the government is running 70% of trains as special trains with higher fares. Poor passengers have to spend more money for their travel by train even for a short distance. Honorable Chairman Sir, until and unless some people's character improves, this tendency of state within state may backfire. Therefore, there should be unity of command rather than multiplicity of commands. And unity of command is that it should come under the government. It was not only the Medical Council of India. The Pharmacy Council of Haryana is also going on like this as also the dental councils and other councils. That means this independence should be for the government, not under the government. Like soldiers, they should remain disciplined under the government. I put it this way. As far as the Standing Committee is concerned, the Honorable Speaker of Lok Sabha and the Honorable Chairman of Rajya Sabha had referred it to the Standing Committee and they made quite good recommendations to make it more user-friendly and those recommendations have been agreed to by the Minister. Still, rules have to be framed. 
in the rules further relaxation can be given as far as the selections in committees and boards are concerned certainly men of integrity and men of professional integrity should be appointed to those posts otherwise it will become another futile exercise so that aspect should be taken care of sir i would like to put forward certain important points for kind consideration of our learned minister i propose these points to be incorporated for effective implementation of this bill sir as we know the world anti doping agency was formed in 1990 under the international olympic committee then the world anti doping agency considered that there should be a doping agency in each and every country and accordingly national anti doping agency was formed in November 2009 and it was registered as a society under the society's registration act after that it was felt that since there was no legislation certain decisions taken by this agency could be taken to court by some of the parties so there was a need for legislation and accordingly it was proposed by the standing committee in 2020 and thereafter it has been converted into a statutory body sir there are certain drawbacks of this act firstly there is a provision of the post of director general of national anti doping agency but his qualifications are not yet mentioned in the bill secondly it has been mentioned categorically in the bill that the government may remove the director general at any point of time from the office on such grounds but those grounds have not been mentioned in this bill thirdly it has been mentioned that the term for director general would be 3 years but it might be extended subject to the decision taken by the government of india there is a clear cut meaning that the director general will be bound to work as per the directives of the government of india and he will be unable to work independently sir there is a provision of national board in this bill and within the national board there is a provision of disciplinary panel if there is a case of doping this disciplinary panel can take the decision so far as punishment is concerned there is also a provision for the appeal panel if an athlete feels that injustice has been done to him he can go to the appeal panel unfortunately it has been mentioned that the board can remove the members of this panel at any point of time and even they might not be given any chance of being heard here lies the question of the independence of the authority sir as far as qualifications of its members are concerned the world anti doping agency has categorically mentioned that there should be specific guidelines for the qualification but this aspect is missing in the existing bill in clause 11 of this bill it is mentioned that the disciplinary panel will consist of one chairperson and four vice chair persons and it has been mentioned that in the absence of the chair person one vice chair person will take the lead role but it has not been mentioned who will be this one vice chair person out of the four there are certain standing committee recommendations the first one is that selection and appointment mechanism should be clear and transparent secondly there should be clear cut discrimination between major and minor athletes and physically challenged athletes specific rules are needed regarding exemptions there is much confusion and even an athlete does not know whether he can take a simple paracetamol or not so there should be adequate awareness as well penalty of an athlete should be proportionate to the amount of the offense done by that athlete after the period of his punishment he should be once again entitled to participate in each and every competition so far as medals and other things are concerned because we know that the career of any athlete is very short sir my next point is regarding the dope testing laboratory it was very unfortunate to note that the only laboratory in india was banned for nearly one year there are 29 accredited laboratories in the world while asia is having six laboratories our suggestion is that each state should have one laboratory sir i sincerely endorse the statement made by my colleague that we should give our best possible effort to have one unit in our country instead of having it in switzerland
there is another confusion regarding athlete support personnel who are the persons to be considered as athlete support personnel it needs to be mentioned clearly in the bill